welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. We're in downtown Disney for the first time in a long while and things are changing here fast. We're going to check out what's new and try some new food and drinks. And it's May, Star Wars month, so we'll check out some of the special Star Wars themed treats and even some cool new merch. Why don't you come with us? On this adventure. when a new food cart comes to downtown Disney. And a new one has arrived. It's Clyde's Hot Chicken. This is a restaurant that was in Fullerton. In 2019 is when they opened. And it has grown to, they've grown into Las Vegas. I think they have almost 10 restaurants at this point. And today we're gonna try their cart here at downtown Disney. And what they serve here is Clyde's Hot Stick. This is five chicken nuggets on a stick. And you can get it with some spice blends. They have three different levels. They have Naked, they have Clyde's Original, and then they have hot as Cali, and that is what I got. It's a hot, flavorful cayenne and habanero blend of spices that will definitely turn up the heat. And I I love things spicy, so let's try this out. This is really good. It's like chunky chicken nuggets covered in that like spice blend. It's not that spicy for the one that's supposed to be more spicy. Oh, it is a little spicy. And it also comes with a sauce. It's called Clyde sauce. I think it might be like cane sauce. It's cane sauce. It's like a ketchup mayo mix. This is a great addition to downtown Disney. I feel like this is something I would enjoy in the park. I was just about to say that the spices aren't that spicy, but the, the longer I sit here, the more it's heating up inside my mouth. If I got it again, I might get the, uh, the one fire level. I'm gonna give this a five out of five Peters. This reminds me of if Raisin Cane's had a spicy chicken. And I appreciate this is actually the dry spice blend. You go to a lot of Nashville hot chicken places and like it's like this weird sauce. That's not Nashville hot chicken. You need the spice blend. And I decided to order the naked stick just to see the contrast between the one that doesn't have any spice on it at all and then the one that Peter got that was supposed to be the super spicy one. Normally when I order hot chicken, I like very, very mild, but these look pretty good. They look like nice and like, you're right, they almost do kind of look like the Raising Cane nuggets, just smaller. Mmm. The inside of these are like perfectly cooked. Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? It's nice and like the white chicken meat on the inside with that super crispy golden brown crust on the outside. They're really good. They're surprisingly flavorful for not having any sort of spice on them. But I will be the judge if this is actually like cane sauce or not because I am an aficionado in cane sauce. This is actually really, really good. It is not cane sauce. I'm gonna be the one to disagree with you there, but whatever it is, it's super flavorful. It almost feels like there's like vinegar or something in there as well. It's really good. I'm sure it like complements the spicy chicken well. I'm gonna give this like a four out of five. Okay, I have to have Kitra try the hot one. I'm usually such a wimp when it comes to hot chicken. Peter normally orders the hot one and I, like I said, I get the mild. So I'm a little bit intimidated here. Mmm. This is good. Wow, yeah. It's not that spicy though. I was expecting it to be like super, super spicy. But this is definitely like, I feel like if we were to go back, I would just get, get this one instead of the naked one. But the naked one's still good. But uh, what'd you give this, a five? Yeah. This gets a five. Ordinary Adventure Star. I feel like this is a great new addition to Downtown Disney and I love that they give it to you on a stick. So you can just walk around and like eat it. Just don't poke yourself in the mouth like I almost did. I feel like sitting here eating is giving me flashbacks during the pandemic when we used to come here all the time because it was like the only place open and we'd just come and like listen to the Disney music and try some foods when we were allowed to like take our masks off. I feel like we haven't been to downtown Disney in so long. I love it. Next up, we're gonna go inside the Lego store. It's been forever since we've gone in there and it's the month of May so they might have some Star Wars stuff. This is one of those ones. This is one of those sets that like I, I wish I just wish we had the space in our house. Cause look at this. 
You could build all the traps and stuff like in the movie. Look at the little cutout of uh, Michael Jordan. So good. So good. Look at the wet bandits. He even has the iron mark on his face. That's awesome. Last year, Kitra got me the NES for a present, and now they have the Atari. They actually have it on display right down here. I'm sorry, the Atari is just a little too old school for me. Which, really? But did you play this when you were a kid? I did. It was my first first system. Wow, Peter's old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only like three years old. I know. Than I'm you. just kidding. It's been so long since I've come into Lego stores. They have a mini haunted mansion. They actually have it set up right there. I love how small it is. It's like the perfect size. Oh look, there's even stuff on the inside too. That's kind of cool. Over on the demo table, they have some Star Wars new edition, the Razor Crest. Wow, that's massive. Remember look when that was in Mandalorian season one and like- They destroyed they, it? They made it, in, they destroyed it in season two, but like before they actually came out with all the toys for it. Yeah. Well, now you can get it in Lego form and it even comes with a little baby, Yo baby Yoda in his pram, which is kind of awesome. And they also have BD-1. Yeah, Zilly Guy, a little health compartment, which I think is cool, you know, just in case you run low on your lives. Oh, I love it. Okay, I found something cool. Lego is doing this new thing. It's a diorama collection. And they have a bunch of sets recreating scenes from throughout the Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, and they have some for, since it's the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, there's some new ones for Return of the Jedi, which are pretty awesome. I like these little sets, because they're like little individual set pieces that you could display yeah. from all the classic scenes in Star Wars. That's kind of dangerous. Yeah, Funko has <laughs> been doing the same thing. Yeah. So tempted, but I just can't get into it. Speaking of Return of the Jedi, there's this Brickheads collection with all the characters from Return of the Jedi, including Endor Leia, which is my favorite version of Leia, and Wicket, and then Luke, and All Black with his green lightsaber. Love it. Ignite the green. <laughs> Since we were right next to the Star Wars trading post, you know that we had to come inside, and they have a brand new Star Wars collection called the 90s Collection, which I, I can't decide if I really love it or I really don't like it, but how interesting is this? I'm not sure what is 90s about it, really. It almost looks like puffy paint. I remember when I was like, grew up in the 90s, I used to like make shirts with puffy paint and stuff. But I love that it says pew pew. And then on the back, it says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And then check out this awesome denim jacket, Star Wars. I think it's the font that I'm not crazy about. It's a little strange. Yeah, it's almost like Comic Sans. Yeah. Like, how do I take that seriously? <laughs> but on the back, this is pretty awesome. Look at this. Darth Vader with the Stormtroopers. I don't think this is part of the 90s collection, but how cute is this R2-D2 hat? I love that it's like corduroy or whatever. I might have to get this. It's like very simple. You guys know that we're not like big pin collectors because it would be a dangerous hobby for us to have. But I just wanted to show this pin. How cool is that? Got the whole Max Rebo band. You got Droopy McCool, Salacious. Got Psy Snoodles. Amazing. And you got Jabba looks so happy. I almost feel bad that he dies. <laughs> this is the coolest lightsaber I've ever seen in my life. How awesome is these? These have been out of stock for so long. I have wanted one. They have a blue one for the Jedi and a red one for the Sith. Question is, which one is Kitcher gonna get? Speaking of BD-1, they have come out with BD units here. It's a yellow color, yellow and black. They have a remote just like the Droid Depot remote. And uh, I guess they can talk with each other and stuff like that. Actually, in Galaxy's Edge, you can actually get yourself BD-1 himself, but in trading post, you can get yourself a yellow and yellow and black. Wait, is his name 2.4 GHZ? Or is that how much power he has? I'm being serious, I don't know. The, the remote control uses that frequency. Oh, okay. I always want this every time I see it. But I, can, I just... I can't justify it, but look at how cute he is. Why is he so cute? There's even cotton candy for the child. Oh, what flavor do you think it is? I thought it was watermelon. Oh, I was gonna say, he seems like a green apple kind of guy, but watermelon's good. We're standing in line to check out and they have all these things that are tempting me. Like, look at this digital watch cover. 
feel like you need that. You don't want it? Now we'd like to thank Bottleneck Gallery for sponsoring this portion of today's video. We love movie art. If you look all around our house, it is covered wall to wall in pop culture art. Many of which come from Bottleneck Gallery. One of our favorite artists, Matt Ferguson, created this amazing poster of one of my favorite movies of all time, Return of the Jedi. This poster was created for the 40th anniversary re-release of the film, and it's spectacular. Bottleneck Gallery has teamed up with Acme Archives to release limited edition screen printed versions of this poster. They're releasing the screen print in English, but also in Japanese, because everything looks cooler in Japanese. These are screen printed and hand numbered. They're doing a timed release, which means that the amount of people who buy this this week will determine the edition size and they'll never be sold again. The Bottleneck Gallery is giving our viewers the opportunity to get theirs early. Just go to the link in the description and grab yours now. These will only be sold for a few days. They will also be selling variants of these prints, which come in a limited supply of only 425. With this really interesting kind of retro desaturated look to them. They look very cool. So we'd like to say once again, thank you so much to Bottleneck Galleries for sponsoring our video today. And now back to the adventure. I love that we don't even need to go into Disneyland to get the magic of the Disneyland ducks. They are here in downtown Disney, searching for food in this little, whatever area this is outside of uh, the Star Wars Trading Post. When Disney announced the Disney 100 celebration, and they said that there was going to be like statues all around the park, I envisioned them to be like this, like these huge statues. So it's kind of cool in downtown Disney, if you come over here, they have like a gigantic statue that you could pose with. The thing I like about this the most is Mickey is a pin collector. He has a Marvel pin, he has a Pixar pin, he has a Star Wars pin, representing all the other branches of the company. We caught a vlogger in the wild. Oh my God. <laughs> what are you doing here? Don't worry, it's a wide angle lens, so it wasn't that close. <laughs> I am trying fly saw chicken as we speak. Oh, I've got my order in. Nice, which one did you go for? Original, I'm, oh. I'm not. Oh, you went got naked? No, I, I know. Or, or the medium. Medium, yeah. Medium? Okay. The naked is no spice. Yeah. Original is spicy. Yeah. And then, Oh, here they come, yeah. right there, they got my food. There's a lot of changes going on here at Downtown Disney. One of them is the remodel of Jazz Kitchen, which is, looks like more of a contemporary, colorful. It's, I gotta, it's, I, it's ugly, I'm sorry, it's <laughs> ugly. The old one it was had so much character, it had these like statues out front, like these mannequins, it was so like over the top. And then they just changed it to like this boring, ugly. I'm sorry, it's ugly. I'm gonna say. Oh, it's <laughs> ugly. I don't understand the de themification of Disney resorts. Like, I don't understand what... Like, does this make me want to go to Jazz Kitchen more? No. But I will say, I do like that new neon sign over for the to-go beignets. Yeah. Like, that looks pretty cool. That's the one positive that I'll take away from this. Yeah, and they are <laughs> changing their menu. They've already changed a couple items, and then more to come when they actually do their official grand reopening. Yeah, in a we'll, week or two. We'll have to come check it out eventually. Maybe the food will be good, who knows. Speaking of downtown Disney going through changes, we heard rumors that Tortilla Joe's might be leaving. We don't know when, but we figured we'd come in at least one last time because they have a special drink for the Disney 100 celebration that I saw and I just had to try. This is called The Last Petal. This has Blanco tequila, rose syrup, fresh lime, sparkling water, with smoke garnished with an edible flower petal. I think they forgot the flower on mine, but that's okay. I'm a sucker for any time there's like a smoke cocktail. And this one kind of reminds me of like that drink that was on the Disney Wish. I think it was also called like the rose or something. I wonder if it has to do with like Beauty and the Beast or something, the last petal. I don't know. That's really sour. It basically just tastes like a margarita, like a really good, strong margarita with just a hint of rose water, and then like a really sour lime. I'm digging it. It's strong. <laughs> I think about like a four out of five. And I decided to get the Grapefruit Hot Honey Bees Harvest Margarita. This supports pollination, education, and preservation. It has Patron Silver Tequila, Honey Bee Hot Honey, Grapefruit Fresh Lime Juice, and you know I love hot honey, so I had to try this. I love my margaritas, just a little bit spicy. This is perfect. I don't even really taste the grapefruit. I taste more of the lime than I do the grapefruit, which is good because I don't really love grapefruit. I 
gives it like a four and a half out of five. Wow. It's very good. Before the pandemic, we used to love coming here, getting margaritas, getting the table side guacamole. Well, they got rid of the table side guacamole once the pandemic hit. And it finally returned like about a month ago. I can't tell you how happy I am to finally get the table side guac because the pre-made guac, not as good. This you actually get to customize it, choose whatever you want in it, choose how spicy or not spicy it is. We got medium. It's incredible. You already know the guacamole gives the ordinary adventure star. You gotta try it when you come to tortilla chips. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, hello. <laughs> Yum. That smells good. Say what you will about Tortilla Joe's. Their margaritas and their guacamole is good. And I am feeling good after having two margaritas there. Just saying. <laughs> and the reason why we think that it might be leaving us is right across the way, they are building Paseo and Centrico, which is an upscale... Mexican dining concept and are they really going to have three Mexican restaurants in downtown Disney? I don't think so. The restaurant is going to have a Michelin star chef from Chicago. I've looked up some of the food that he creates and it looks incredible. And they've also taken out the loft areas of Wonderground Gallery and the Disney Home Store, giving them more room on the upper level yeah, for I'm this restaurant. I'm excited to check it out when it eventually comes. Look at that. That looks like a good margarita to me. Can't wait to try it. They're making little gurgus. Ow, what happened to my body? In honor of Star Wars Month, they have brought back the Grogu candy apples at Marceline's. But we don't have room in our tummies for that. We're going to head over to the Grand Californian because they have some Star Wars treats. Yeah, we're going to eat some other Star Wars treats. Grand Californian Hotel. They have some Star Wars treats for the entire month of May. That includes a Star Wars sugar cookie, a Wookiee cookie, some pretzel lightsabers, a Stormtrooper Rice Krispie treat, a tropical whoopie pie, a Falcon lollipop, and a Galaxy Macaron box. I had to get myself the tropical Grogu whoopie pie. I almost feel bad eating it. <laughs> Look at the little eyes on the guy. You always have to go for the ear, right? I have a confession. I've never had a whoopie pie that wasn't chocolate or vanilla. And this pineapple whoopie pie, it's kind of like freaking me out. Or maybe it's freaking me out that I'm eating Grogu. Either way, it's, it's a cute treat. Would I get it again? I don't know. I'll give it like a three and a half out of five, Peters. It doesn't taste bad. It tastes good. It's just, I feel bad eating it. I feel like we always forget to go in the Grand Californian for special holidays. They always have special treats that you can't find anywhere else. And this is a pro tip. You don't have to have like a ticket to the park to go in there and you don't need to be a guest to go in there. If you just park at Downtown Disney and are having like a Downtown Disney day, you're more than welcome to go in there. But we had to get ourselves the Wookiee cookie. She told me that this was a chocolate chip cookie with Nutella in the middle. It looks a little bit different than that Wookiee cookie that we got in Hollywood Studios that one time, which was more like a, it was a, more like a whoopie pie. It was like oatmeal cookies or something. This looks really good though, doesn't it? Dang. You could see like, it's like bulging in the middle. I'm imagining that's where all the Nutella is. <laughs> this is so good. I think this will be really good. Like you put it in the microwave and you got like a scoop of vanilla ice cream. And I just had that ooey gooey Nutella. Oh my God, it's like falling apart in my hands. This gets a five out of five. This is delightful. It's weird, it has like these, these black sprinkles on the outside. Yeah, I love sprinkles. Oh. Do your Chewbacca impression. No? Come on. This is very good. To me, it might be like a little too chocolate. It's like chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. I know some people love that. I think I would give it like a four out of five beaters. It's good. I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> you can only eat it if you do your impression. 
No, I haven't. And no trip to downtown Disney is complete without going into the world of Disney and seeing all the latest merchandise. And it looks like they're decked out for summer with Pixar. Look at this adorable little clutch. It's a, it's a piece of cheese. What could you even fit in there? Oh, you could fit. You could fit pretty much everything but your phone in there. I've always wanted to buy Anyone Can Cook. Now you can, but the problem is it's mostly just a notebook. <laughs> it looks like they actually do have some recipes. I didn't realize that. I think the point is is that anybody can cook. So like you put your recipes in there. It's my recipes. I know. We Definitely don't, not that kid over We don't there. want Peter's recipes, that's for sure. Okay, this is cool. It's an, a countdown calendar in the style of Pixar's Up until your wedding. What does that mean? Five heart, 20. Maybe five months, 20 days? Look at all the different shoulder pets there are now. A boo. This is a great one. He's a great sidekick. You have Tuck Tuck. Still haven't seen that movie. And then Sebastian. They started coming out with merchandise for the live action Little Mermaid. And I'm not sure. Listen, I'm trying to keep an open mind, but why? Why they do my boy flounder like that? Why? Why? And then look at Scuttle and Sebastian. What the heck is going on here? I don't know. Ursula doesn't look mean enough, in my opinion. Who knows? Maybe one day these characters... Maybe I'll see the movie and they will be iconic and I will love them. I mean, he does look kind of cute here. But I just... I just... I just don't understand. I feel like Disney is doing a lot more jean jackets these days. Look at this shirt down here. All of my favorites on there. From what I have seen of the trailers, I will say Triton, who's played by Javier Bardem. He looks pretty good. I mean, I know this is just a Funko Pop, but that's one character that I can get behind. So we actually got to see a sneak preview, advanced screening of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and it's awesome. Can't say much, you know, because it's not out yet, but there is Baby Rocket in the movie, and they're selling Baby Rocket plushes. How cute is that? I love him so much. Look at his eyes. He's like, so cute. I like this Guardians hat because it's the Guardians of the Galaxy logo, but it's in the alien language. Yeah. Yeah, my only crit critique of the movie is I don't like bodybuilder group. And if you do want merchandise with the normal logo, they do got a t-shirt. We've shown these Grogu mystery plushes before on the channel but here they actually have them on display. It's my first time getting to look at all of them and how cute are they. Kitra needs them all. If you want to see our video from Star Wars Night, we'll put it right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Jay, Aaron, Kendall, and Kent. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.